in a world where there's so much meanness in politics and, and power and, and uh, advertisements, she worked behind the scenes by never forgetting a human being. Now they say she never forgot a name, and she is incredible. The minutes of the United States Senate say that she was, was noted for possibly knowing everybody in, in Idaho. I think it was not just that she remembered names, she remembered people. And that's how she got her political power. She said wise things like, don't worry uh, what people are thinking about you because they don't do it that often. Or she would say, uh, we would all have a better perspective on life if we knew that the number of people at our funeral will ultimately depend on the weather. Um, or every politician should know that one day he or she will be replaced. Her parents had originally had a uh, uh, homestead on Lake Coeur d'Alene. Her father built a home up there and ran a steamboat mail route on Lake Coeur d'Alene. And they, f they built their farm, their dairy farm, just about five miles north of here. And uh, that's where she was born with, with four older brothers and two younger brothers. She was asked to be a reporter for Coeur d'Alene uh, the, the Press straight out of high school and she took some of the, the births and deaths at first and then she went on and, and did almost everything for the press. She went from there to become a administrative assistant for a, uh, Governor Doc Robbins. Um, she had been covering uh, political things on, for the press and covered the Second World War and some really interesting things and, and Doc Robbins saw her uh, uh, the Governor Robbins saw her uh, strengths and uh, begged her and pleaded and it, he sent people up here. It took a long time to convince her and she became the first woman administrative assistant for a governor, certainly in the state, I think possibly in the nation. This was in the, the 1940s still. Uh, she worked for Governor uh, Robbins and then she worked for Governor Lynn Jordan and uh, then she made a run for Congress. Uh, she didn't win in North Idaho because I don't think any Democrat, any Republican could have won in North Idaho then. Uh, it was all strong Democrat. She later called that uh, a, a temporary fit of insanity. She was um, just about 40. After she lost those, Governor Smiley asked her to be the, Commerce, the Secretary of Commerce and Development for Idaho. Understand this is a woman with a high school education. Uh, never had a course in business, never had a course in economics. She did everything by the simplest strategies. She started off asking fifth graders from Idaho to write to fifth graders in other states. Um, a little genius in that because she understood long before McDonald's did that people with kids were the best, were the most likely travelers. And she then went on to other strategies. She did not have the money to invite the CEOs of big corporations to come here to work, and so she um, promoted hunting and fishing in the mountains and horseback uh, backcountry trips as a way to get the CEOs of those big corporations to come here themselves on their own money and then to, to like it and to stay. At the time, Idaho was the only state in the West that was losing ground in per person income. By the time she finished, Idaho was at that time growing in, at a rate that for a short time surpassed even Hawaii as the fastest growing state in the, in the nation. Um, we reached almost a, a median income for the nation at that time. And uh, it was newspapers all over the state were running her picture and showing uh, showing the marvelous Louise because she was so well loved. This is at the end of the 60s. Um, she went on from there to work for Congressman Orville Hansen for several years and then she came back and retired, sort of retired, uh, to live on Lake Coeur d'Alene and actually became even more powerful then because of her contacts with, uh, with so many people in high places and the careers that she started. Someone said that you're the way to be successful is to make other people successful. And that's what she did. She helped people out. She used her influence to get people jobs and to get them connected and to give them ideas and directions that they could go with their career. 
uh, two different later Idaho governors told me how she encouraged and helped and nurtured them early in their careers and that led to them becoming governors. People knew if they were in politics, they wanted to be friends with Louise. She also became very interested in civil rights. Um, we had a, a problem at that time with a white supremacist group in town and she helped a group of people lobby to get a, an anonymous, a, a unanimous vote in the legislature for a law allowing civil damages for malicious harassment. And that brought an end to that uh, uh, white supremacist compound that gave Coeur d'Alene a pretty bad name sometimes. So, and uh, she didn't want Coeur d'Alene to be known for that. Uh, at one point, people encouraged her to run for governor. And she had the name recognition, she had the, the people behind her, she had a lot of the things that any politician would want and she knew it, um, but she didn't. She chose not to I, for several reasons and I talk about them in the book, but I think the biggest is she was not one to say her own name over and over. And I think that's what she, she preferred to work behind the scenes and became one of those people that works in the, in the senator's office and the congressman's office and the governor's office to get things done outside the political fight. I came here uh, 20 years ago and to be the pastor of her church. And I tell in the book some interesting little stories. Uh, one of the, the most fun ones was when she invited her pastor out to get acquainted. She took me down the street for a burger and a beer. And not many little old ladies take your pastor out, their pastor out for a burger and a beer. Uh, and she asked me what I wanted to know and, and who I wanted to know. And I didn't know then uh, who I was talking to uh, because she never talked about herself. She, uh, uh, the stories that I found, I found the story of a plane crash. She was at an important meeting in Sun Valley and it, she was in charge of a lot of national people that were there in Sun Valley. And she took some women for a little drive up in the mountains and, and they saw, as they were driving, she saw a plane come down and disappear into the forest. And she slammed on the brakes. She was in tennis shoes and it was knee deep snow. She slammed on the brakes and dove into the woods and found her way through the woods to the plane. And when her, the young people that were with her caught up, she was inside the plane consoling the one survivor. Um, and then hours later, she's back at that important meeting and the newspaper has a picture of her giving an award and all dressed up and people, her family didn't know anything about that. She didn't, she didn't talk about herself. A politician who didn't talk about herself, who rather was more interested in you and your family and um, what a model for young people. I, I just, I'm so excited about this story because she is a role model for, for women and for men of, of how we can be successful in life by, by helping others. I officiated her funeral in May of 2008 and she had insisted that no politicians were to speak and it was to be a limited amount of time and uh, uh, she made all the plans and all the arrangements. She didn't want anybody to build their career uh, on, on her funeral. She was a, she was a realistic person and, and that was with a, that was not a bitter thing. It was just a realistic thing. She knows how things work and she wanted it to be in her church and just with her pastor uh, because she was not, and the weather was good. There were lots of people there. <laughs> the biggest legacy of all is all the careers she started. The, all the people all over the state who got their start from Louise Shattuck and and the way she did it by being nice to people, it's, it's a model that, that politics is, is about us, the people, and that we can be nice to each other, um, that we can be civil, that we can be strong. She was not really a moderate. She was positioned toward the middle, but she was a fierce moderate, if you want to think of that, she was very strong that it is right to listen to both sides. It is right to be civil. It is right to care about what the other people have to say. And that's a model that we desperately need today. And that's another reason I was just thrilled to write this book.